here's my superposition chart and as you can see there are nine dimensions I didn't really take the time to explain this I kinda just posted everything but you know I'm trying to communicate with smart people so uh, you should have already figured out most of this chart this chart if a picture is worth a thousand words I'd say this chart speaks volumes like the Encyclopedia Britannica or something along that order so I'm going to show you some things that you may not be seeing in the chart. They are much, much more than what you're seeing uh, at first appearances. I'm going to kind of go over this chart a little bit before I go into this. Here we have the first dimension and then the second dimension in three-dimensional space. Now, um, everyone knows we live in three-dimensional space. Here we have the uh, first dimension, which is latitude or the latitude thread. Three-dimensional space is basically um, made up of uh, you know two positions. You have the first position and the second position. Uh, just like they say in uh, supercomputing about uh, superposition. I read an article, I think it was in Wired Magazine, where uh, it talked about superposition being one position being off and the other position being on and the superposition being both positions. Well, I said, uh, how would God make superposition? If superposition exists, it should exist in nature. So I said, well, let me take a look at three-dimensional space. I said, what would be the first position? Well, the first position would be latitude, right? We know we on three-dimensional space, uh, we have, on two-dimensional space, we have a uh, latitude line, and then we have what I call a longitude line. That would be two-dimensional space. The third dimension would be if I stuck my finger through this paper and it came up out of the paper. That would be third. That would be three-dimensional space. But we see in superposition, there's only two positions. The first position and the second position, and both of them combined make the superposition. That's incorrect. God's superposition creates a third position, the what I would like to call a neutral position, which would be the z-plane. Here we have an X plane, sorry, and then we have a Y plane, and then we have a Z plane, which would be the neutral position. So all three of these combined make up the entire superposition, or God's superposition. So that's where I got the idea about superposition. So I started out with the latitude thread for the space-time fabric, and then the longitude thread, and then the superposition being the latitude thread, longitude, and then the Z plane, which would be a neutral position. All three of them combined make a superposition. So I have third three-dimensional space being the superposition of the first and second dimension, right? Well, in, in God's superposition, you're only allowed three positions: the first position, the opposing position, and then the superposition, which makes up which is both of them combined with the neutral position. But we hear everybody talking about time as the fourth dimension. Well, in God's superposition, there's only three positions. That's it. So in order to have a fourth position, you would simply have to do it at the same exact time. So we have to put the fourth dimension not below the third, but right beside the first one. And this is why. Because... In order for me to figure out the order of the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions, I had to think, how do you add time to a line of latitude? Well, you have to think. In order to add time to a line of latitude, you have to connect both ends. What is time? Intervals, right? One, two, three. That's all time is just intervals. One, two, three. There's just timing the amount of time it takes to, to return back to where you started from. That's all time is. So in order to make time, you would just have to simply connect both ends. So that's where I got temporal latitude from. I just connected both ends and I got a loop. Well, I did the same thing for temporal longitude. I connected both ends and I got a loop. Well, just like we did with both of these, we did God's superposition. You take uh, latitude, sorry, and then longitude, you put them together, you get a you get a sphere. You take two loops, two rings, 
Now well, I can't really do the camera and see it at the same time, but if you took if you put both of those together, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a pretty much you're gonna get that. You're gonna get a sphere. And that would be the superposition. Now I can't do because you're adding time, you're doing it at the same time, you can't have latitude and temporal latitude at the same time. You can't do that because they're both the same thing. And you can't have longitude and temporal longitude at the same time. You can't do that because you can't have the same thing. But you can have longitude and temporal latitude at the same time. Right? And you can have latitude and temporal longitude at the same time. But you can't have three-dimensional space and a temporal sphere at the same time. So the only order you can put this in would be to have the temporal sphere at the same time as the latitude thread and the temporal latitude at the same time as the longitude thread and then the temporal longitude at the same time as three-dimensional space. So now we've cheated and I've expanded God's superposition to include six positions now instead of three. Well, guess what? Now we have two columns. We have space column and a time column, which means what? We can cheat again. Now we can create a third column because we have two columns, the first position and then the second position. Now we can create a superposition column. So we have space column, the time column, and now we have the space-time column, which is the superposition of the space column and time column. Now, in order for superposition uh, in this column, we would have to take one item from this column and a second item from this column, from the time column. And then we would put one in each position. So what happens when you take latitude thread and then you can't take temporal latitude, they're both the same thing, so you'd have to take the temporal longitude. So if you take latitude thread and longitude thread, you put them together, you would get a space-time vortex. Now, how do you see that? Because you have a line of latitude, right? And then you have temporal longitude, right? And all longitude is, is um, all longitude is, is um, intervals. Mm, excuse me. And the latitude thread is a line. So if you have a line that's descending, right? See, it's going down in a direction. Let's say you have a line that's descending in a direction, right? Well, if the line is moving in this direction, the intervals would also have to move. So you would have, as the line descends, each interval would also descend. So you would have, the second interval would be shorter than the first one. So you'd have one second, then half a second, then, you know, you would, you would keep descending down till you got to a point. So here you would have your x, your x plane which is the which is the temporal latitude and then the y plane which is the temp what I'm sorry the latitude is the x plane then the temporal longitude is the y plane and as the line descends the intervals will also descend and it would go into a black hole or space-time vortex to a singularity or a single point and that would be the superposition of the first and the sixth dimension now i did the same thing for the second dimension longitude thread and the temporal I mean, and the temporal latitude now when you put both of those together you get the same effects but it's going in opposite it's going out and you would start out the singularity and you as as you went out the intervals would also increase and they would go up now we're going to go into this a little bit later now if you look here the superposition here is at the bottom it's three dimensional space and then we have another superposition at the top for the time, the chart would be balanced by putting the third superposition in the center. And here you have the first position, the first dimension top, with its opposing at the bottom, and then with going up there. And then here you have these two together. So you have these two apart up here, and then you have these two together down here. So the chart is balanced, and then you have the two superpositions with the other superposition in the, in the center. So it's a balanced chart. The entire chart is balanced. Figuring out the eighth dimension took me two days. I had to figure out what the superposition was between the seventh and the ninth dimension. Well, you have space-time compression, and here you have space-time decompression. Well, here in the eighth dimension, you would have both. 
space time compression and decompression. You have decompression coming out the bottom, then compression going back into the top, then going in again. And by the way, this is a multi channel temporal magnetosphere. I didn't go into that, but this actually that is an eight loop that switches and shifts every time it loops. So that's why you have multiple cells in a magnetic field because it's shifting every time it goes back in. So it's acting like a temporal sphere, but it's also shifting. So it, 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 it's shift, it's, it's operating, it's, it, it's, doing, it's doing a superposition of what I'm also called a hyperposition because this superposition is made up of other superpositions. So this could also be called the hyperposition. Now you would sh it would shift for every single uh, turn. So it would shift every single time until it ended right back where it started. The superposition here puts the ninth dimension flat, like a ring. Anything that comes out would come out on that line on the two, and it would it would come out in the center and be pushed outward. Anything going in will come at the top and go down in there. Now, the eighth dimension is funny because it, ha it can come in multiple configurations. I haven't gotten into fabric objects yet, which I haven't talked about, and I, and I will. But I wanted to show you something else that's interesting. I told you earlier that this chart is like the Encyclopedia Britannica. It can tell you volumes of information. Now, we see that we have the superpositions coming down here, the first position, second position, and then we have the three-dimensional space and we say everybody says oh we live in three-dimensional space but according to this chart it's much more than that because take a look at this if we look at this chart going across we have the latitude thread temporal sphere and a space-time vortex going in what happens if you put all three of these together well you would get a planet with an axis and a gravitational pull See? So we live here. This is our universe up here. Now let that sink in for a while. If this is where we live, then what is this and this? And that's where this theory gets very interesting. Please understand that all of these dimensions are operating together. The first one all the way to the ninth one. But because of time and our interactions with time, we are calibrated to the first, fourth, and seventh dimension in this part of the universe. I'll put it that way. This is the part of the universe that we are operating in. I'm zooming right here. The first, fourth, and seventh. And like I said in my last video, you have a planet. You see the influence of the dimensions just by looking in outer space. We see a planet. We see an axis, and we also see a gravitational pull. So we see these effects here, and we see some residual effects of some of these other dimensions. Uh, but primarily, we see that we are here, because we see great influences of uh, the dimensions on our part of the universe. But what about these two? What about the 2, 5, and the 8, and the 3, 6, and the 9? What about this part of the universe, these two parts of the universe? I wanted to focus on the 3, 6, 9 because it's the polar opposite of the 1, 4, 7, according to the chart. Now, I wrote on my blog that, <clears throat> you know, it's very difficult to think that anything could exist here because we have three-dimensional space, we have only one dimension of time, which is the sixth dimension, and then we have a dimension of space-time, which seems to push everything apart. You see, uh, if you go here, gravity is caused by the seventh dimension, which is the compression of space-time. You know, they, you know, scientists say and physicists say that the space between the atoms are so great that you know. You could have a small piece of matter, and the space between the atoms in that matter would probably be about, you know, uh, uh, the size of the, you know, in comparison, the size of our entire solar system. That when you compress that sp empty space, you can actually squeeze matter. Uh, you can, 
squeeze matter probably to the size of a you know very small object. It would weigh a whole lot, but all the empty space in between the atoms would be removed. And I saw a video where it said that you could take the Empire State Building, remove all the space between the atoms, and it would shrink the entire building down to the size of a grain of rice or something like that. Um, so here we see a black hole doing space-time compression, basically compressing the empty space between the atoms. Now, the opposite of that, or the opposing position, would be uh, space-time decompression, which the ninth dimension is doing that. This uh, drawing that I made of the ninth dimension is somewhat uh, incorrect. I did it just to show how it's operating. It's more flat. The seventh is more shaped like a funnel. The ninth is more flat. It doesn't extend out like this. It, 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 it extends more from the center going out. Kind of like here in the eighth dimension. See that little ring with the rings coming out of this? It operates more like that. But I just showed it, you know, to, to help you understand that you would be coming out there at a 90 degree angle, you know, when you come out. Uh, but the ninth dimension, we would have space-time decompression. So if gravity is caused by the seventh dimension, which I put some quotes from Wikipedia on there concerning Einstein's uh, theories on relativity, and um, if, if the seventh dimension was causing gravity, then we would have to assume that the ninth dimension, which would be the opposing position, is causing levity, which is the opposite of gravity. Uh, I don't know if that's an official term or whatever, but that's the only word I can find in a dictionary that describes the opposite of gravity. Which, So I'm using the term levity to describe an, a polar uh, position from gravity or an opposing position from gravity. So here we have a levitational force, or levi not necessarily force, but we have the effects of, of, uh, uh, of levity here where all matter is being pushed apart. And we have one dimension of time, and we have three-dimensional space. How could anything form here? All matter would be pushed apart. So anything that, you know, would try to come together, it would simply just scatter. And we have one dimension of time. So uh, the sixth dimension uh, has an effect when you put it together with the fifth, and it forms the fourth. Both of these are operating in two parts of the temporal sphere. And I'll go into that in another video. We have one dimension of time, three dimensional space. So I want to show you something. Here we have gravity pushing inward to a point, and here we have levity pushing outward. Now, if you look at the 147 universe, I said we had a planet here, which is a superposition. So we have everything in this universe is spherical because we see the effects of time in the fourth dimension. But here we have one dimension of time. So how can anything uh, uh, be spherical? You know, how could anything, what shape would, would objects take here? Well, if you look at this, we have a superposition here, which is consisting of the, I don't know if you can see this, of the fifth dimension and the second. So we have, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, subparts of the superposition that are actually sitting here. Remember, superposition consists of the first, you know, the first two positions and then a neutral position. Well, here we see the same thing. We see the first two positions and then we see a neutral position. But look, we have a five here and we have a six here. So when you put these together, guess what forms? You get a sphere. Because the 5, the 6, and the 5 from the 9, the 5 that's part of the 9, will combine to form a sphere. So now you have a fourth dimensional sphere when you put these two together. But you still have the effects of levity, which is still pushing things apart. But there is a sphere here. And if you look at the center of the sphere, you would have three-dimensional space. So here you would have a planet with an axis and a gravitational pull, which explains why the Earth is solid at the center, and then you have magma, a mantle, and a crust. Here, everything will push apart. So how can any planet form? How can anything form at all? Well, you have to think about it. 
In our universe, NASA sends off a rocket into space using huge amounts of energy to push, to push it out, you know, uh, whatever the term is, uh, where it ex escapes, I don't know, they call it escape velocity, where it has to have enough force to escape the gravitational pull of the, of the Earth. But as it moves away from the Earth, the, the effects of gravity become weaker. So it doesn't need as much force. And then you all, everyone sees that the satellites and stuff use these little steam jets to move around and, you know, and they can stay up there in orbit. They don't have to use huge amounts of fuel to stay in orbit because they're far enough away to where the effects of gravity are not as strong. So the further you move away from the Earth, the weaker the effects of gravity are. Well, then we would have to assume that the same thing applies here. At the very center of the of the sphere you would have the strongest force of levity but as you move the way that force would become weaker and weaker and weaker now remember I told you earlier that even though we are here in the 147 universe we are all still part of all of this remember we have three-dimensional space which is formed so we're 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 timing our timer of our of the matter in our bodies set in alignment here but uh, the effects of these are also seen in our universe so we would have to assume the same thing for this universe that as the force of levity pushes you away it gets weaker and weaker you have to take into account the residual effects of the 147 on the 369 universe which means that as matter got pushed further and further away, it would reach a point where the effects would become so weak that the effects of gravity would, would, uh, would show up or the, effects of the residual effects of gravity would start to affect the matter. And then what you would have is an equilibrium zone. Let me take this form here. Let me take this sheet here. And you would get something like this. This is the 369 universe. You have levity coming out the center, but then you have the residual effects of gravity pulling in. So you have gravity pulling in, levity pushing out, and here you would have an equilibrium zone where matter would settle in. It would be a planet. A planet could form, but the planet would be hollow on the inside. It would be a hollow Earth. In the Earth, the effects of levity, you could actually live on the inside of the sphere, and build cities, and because of the, you could build cities on the inside of the sphere and on the out, you have the gravity which would be pulling down into the sphere. You could build a city and stay on the outside of the sphere, or you could be on the inside, and levity would hold you to the crust. So you would have a hollow Earth. And uh, anyone, and I'm not going to go into this, but you could Google hollow Earth theory on the uh, internet. And you're going to come up with a lot of interesting stuff. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> so uh, this would be a hollow planet. The 369 would be a hollow planet. You would have floating boulders. You could have water, oxygen on both sides. You'd have water that could possibly, entire oceans that could fill up uh, this equilibrium. And then land masses that could actually float. You know, like continental drift, but it would float. On the on the on this in this equilibrium zone, it would look kind of like the movie Avatar, where you'd have floating boulders and things like that. But you, for the most part, you could have large land masses, water, air, oxygen, and you could have an entire civilization on both sides, and even maybe you know some tunnels or whatever connecting both sides, maybe through water or whatever. You could, you know, there's all types of things that could that could be here. But the planet would be very very large. It would be extremely large. Now. If you look, I don't have it on a graph here, but we see the residual effects of these other dimensions just by looking at our solar system. The Earth doesn't have rings around it, but Saturn does. We can see some of the effects of some of these other places by looking at our own uh, solar system. For example, one planet that shows the residual effects of the 369 universe is Jupiter. And it's large size. I believe it's a gas giant. That's what they call it. Well, that's the residual effects of the 369 universe are showing up in Jupiter. 
The residual effects of the 258 universe are showing up in Saturn with its rings. I'm not going to go into it a whole lot right now, but uh, the 258 is a flat, would be a flat planet. It would be a flat Earth, which you could Google flat Earth on the, <laughs> on the Internet. You'll come up with a lot of interesting stuff from the past also. So I believe, and it's my honest belief, that we did not originate here in this part of the universe, but we migrated here from these parts through these space-time bridges, which in another video I will go into, that link these parts. There are these space-time bridges that link these, and I think we migrated from these places to this part of the planet. 